In this video there's a lot of firsts for me. First time with working with Queen Ebony. First time making a duck caller. First time etching brass. All these things are my first time and first attempts. I love the challenge of these things. You work out what you need to do, you focus on the important details, you think you've got it all right, you put it all together after hours and hours of work, and you then think to yourself, what the fuck have I done wrong? So, that's a piece of Queen Ebony. Very dense, very heavy, very hard. I'm going to use some of this to make a duck caller for my brother's 60th birthday. Uh, like me, he's a very keen hunter. I thought it would be an appropriate gift for his 60th birthday. So come along for the ride and let's see if I can build a duck quacker. Never done it before, so there should be some challenges. Alright. Right, so that's a 55-50 cube now, which we can um, turn the callers out of. But boy, that's hard. That's hard as hell, that stuff. It's going to make a lovely duck caller. Beautiful brain in it. Got this brass attachment, and I'm going to use a section off it on the end here. This section on the end is a brass band on the uh, main body of the duck quacker. So that's most of the thread filed out and sanded. That'll be good enough for what we want. It'll actually add the little grooves in there will assist with the gluing in into the into the wood. We'll give the tops a little bit of sand to flush them off. So that's been polished up to, I think that was 800 grit. So that's cool. What I'll do now is I'll coat that in a paint, let that dry, and then once that's coated and dried, I'm then going to scratch in uh, my brother's name and maybe some decorations, we'll see, and then um, etch it with some ferric chloride. I recoated over the black with some white paint as well, just to give it a bit of contrast. As you can see here, I printed off a couple of logos, a little duck here uh, in flight, and Rex's name. I'll transfer these onto the brass band uh, using a bit of carbon paper, as you can see uh, coming up. Once I transferred the image, I used a series of knives and, and scratches just to take the paint off the areas where I wanted to be etched. 
Um, I wasn't too happy with the adhesion of the paint on this. This um, when I do this sort of thing next time, which I'd like to try because I was quite pleased with the results. I'll use a different coating, something that will key to the bronze a bit better than this paint did. Even though it worked, it didn't key as well and I couldn't uh, scratch it to create effects or lighter, finer effects, which is one of the things I want to work on and actually see what sort of decorations I can get and how fine I can get the decorations. But I'll, I'll need to try that in, in the next uh, process. You can see here on the duck how the paint's just peeling off the brass instead of actually being physically scratched off the brass. It's just showing that there isn't a lot of adhesion with the paint on the brass. We'll put it in there and we'll see how we go. I'm no chemist and I'm a complete amateur in this etching process but it's my understanding that baking soda neutralizes the acid once you've finished etching the material so the acid gets uh, neutralized and it um, doesn't carry on etching. I think we'll uh Put it in for another 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, I think that's pretty etched in. So we'll put it into some baking soda, neutralize the acid. Might have just bloody worked. Who would have thought, eh? Alright, next stage. Now that's neutralized as well. Put that in the bath of acetone to take all the paint off and we'll see what it looks like. Duck's turned out alright. Rex Tro's turned out alright. Alright, using some uh, two pot epoxy paint. Uh, some black, I filled in those uh, etches with it and then I baked it so that should be really hard and keyed on there it seems to be really well adhered to that so that's what we want so we'll sand all this off once we um, put this onto the barrel um, so that's the next thing we're going to do, let's make the barrel Alright, next thing we're to do is drill a 16mm hole through the centre of that block. Here I'm using the tail vise on the lathe just to centralise the block into the clamp and then from here I'll tighten the clamp up and that'll lock the block in place and then I'll be able to drill the centre of it out. This was slow going, um, the Queen Ebony, really hard, so you couldn't rush this, you just had to gradually work the uh, drill into the, into the piece and slowly cut into it and then um, keep reversing in and out and keeping the temperature down while you're slowly cutting through the, the block. Time for a 
a side project. You have to make an expanding mandrel. So we've got the barrel blank with a 16mm hole drilled through it, ready to go. All right. What we've got to be able to do is turn this on the lay so I can turn both sides of the block because that whole block is going to be the barrel. Now to do that I'm going to make a mandrel, an expandable mandrel that will go through that hole, lock into here and then when you clamp this and push this into the end it will spread this open and lock this block into place. Let's see if it works. First thing we're going to do is turn this down to 16mm. So the next thing is, we've got to split this so that when the mandrel's pushed in, it spreads it out and locks it onto the, helps lock it onto the block and, and stops it from turning. So I whipped up this quick jig. As you can see, it's just a block of wood with a 45 V cut into it. And then what I did is I then cut it in half through the middle here. And then what that means is when I put this on here, I should be able to cut a nice little V in the, um, in the piece. Like that. Our block will go into this like that. And our man will go onto this spindle will go on the end like that. And then when we tighten this up, should mean that that's quite tight and it is. It should mean we should be able to turn it. thicker all around the outside 25 question is would that press on oh, I think there's not a lot of compression in that wood so what we'll do is we'll carry on and take a little bit more off oh I think we're good oh, yeah. oh, it's getting close so I think that's close enough that it'll actually press on now. She should be good for a friction fit, but what I've done as well is I've, uh, I've just um, put some little grooves in there. You can see, put some grooves into it so that uh, when we glue the end cap on, that'll help it all hold on. Got it. Come out good. That's certainly pressed on there. That's not going to be coming off anytime soon. So that's the brass band on. Next thing is we've got to turn the rest of the barrel, but that's um that's coming up pretty good. Well, so far so good. No major stuff ups anyway.
I had a rough idea of the shape that I wanted to make the barrel on the stuck core. Um, but as, as, I, as you go along and, and I look at it and see the shape and the form, I'll make little corrections and adjustments as I see fit. Well, whether anyone else thinks it's a, a nice shape or not, who, who knows? But I, in the end, I like the form that uh, I eventually ended up with. Here I'm just turning in a little recess on the barrel. This is where the lanyard will, will tie onto the barrel so you can wear it around your neck. Uh, and you don't have to carry it in your hand all the time. You can see here I, I masked off the brass band that I've pressed onto the barrel. The last thing, <laughs> the last thing I want to be doing now after all the work I put into that brass band is, is taking a chunk out of it with a, with a chisel or, or a scratch in it because I, I was a bit careless. So I put a few layers of masking tape around it which hopefully will protect it and make sure that I don't do anything <laughs> silly. Um, but I was very careful around it to try and not uh, uh, cause any catastrophes. I'm still really quite an amateur at this wood turning lark. Um, you know, just trying to figure out how the, the chisels work and how the scrapers work and which is the best angle to approach the piece with. This wood being so hard as well didn't make it much easier. So it, it's a, just a gradual work away at it till it, I get the shape I want. And then of course I'll, I'll work through the sandpaper and clean up most of it with the sandpaper and then um, we have the finished barrel. Let's sand it up to 400 grits. Looking good. Looking like it's almost done. That's well, come up pretty good. So that's the barrel done. It's just had a coat of linseed oil on it so far. Uh, so, but <laughs> it's come up pretty good, really. Quite happy how that's come up. Uh, the next thing is the soundboard or the mouthpiece. That's uh, what makes a quite a quack. This was relatively easy compared to that. So let's get on doing that. So this is the insert or the mouthpiece. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is drill this hole. Now it's got to be drilled at a specific depth of 84 millimeters. The total soundboard length is 98 millimeters. Uh, so 84 millimeters, we've got to drill this hole uh, into um, into the side, and that's what we'll do first. All right, so we've got a five mil drill. We've got to stop at 84 millimeters, and we'll drill that into the end here. It's got to be exactly 84 millimeters. Deep. It's very important as well that this hole that I'm drilling in this block stays dead center of the block. Um, I can't afford the drill to skew off to one side or not be centralized in this block um, because it'll uh, affect the a future process in making the um, soundboard or insert. All right, that's 84 mil. I'm using a tapered reamer here to put a taper into the end of the soundboard or the insert.
close, a little bit more, and we'll just sneak up onto the fit. Beautiful, perfect. Nice and snug. All right, now we'll turn the rest of the barrel. So we've got the insert done, it's got the hole drilled in it, I've sanded this to about 400 grit so far, but that of course will go into there and that'll have the, the reed in it that'll make the quacking noise. Now the, the next job is the nerd wracking bit. I made a jig up here, as you can see, all right, which the soundboard will then go into, like that, all right, gets um, locked into place and then we cut using the bandsaw out that shape and a little notch in the barrel for the cork. Now, um, the hope is we cut that 5mm hole that we've drilled into here to a certain depth in half. That's the hope. If it doesn't cut it in half, I'll have to try again and make another one. But uh, we'll lock this in, bolt it up and then run it in the bandsaw and cross our fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> We have split that drill where we've drilled it at five mil and hole dead in half. Really pleased with that. Look at that. So now I'll just take some files and just smooth it off so that's level with the rest of the jig. And then we can um, take it out and put a reed in it, <laughs> see if it quacks like a duck. There it is. So that's the soundboard. Alright, so now we'll make a, um, a cork wedge to go into here with the reed and then we'll see if this works. Cork's a bit tight. Didn't whittle that down, but I think. It's better. Okay, that's the corking. Trim the sides. All right, see if it works. <laughs> Mmm. I think we've got to take more off the off the soundboard.
Wrong way around. Got it. <sighs> that sounds better. I like that. All right. I have finished the duck call. Well, not finished it. Next thing we're to do, we'll do a bit of final sanding, final finishing, uh, put a uh, couple of coats of linseed oil on it, and um, then she's done. But the um, the soundboard was quite tricky to get correct. I ha I had to file some more off and make it a little bit thinner, adjust the angle here, and then adjust the reed as well. So it's a combination of things to get the sound right. And that's relatively easy to blow too. Before I was having to blow it quite hard to get the result and you couldn't get the soft notes when you're trying to do this do the uh, quieter sound. But that's nice and easy to blow now. That's really good. Please how that's come out. It took a while to get it, but we got there. I want to make a little box for this cooler to go into. So, uh, first job, we'll resaw some timber down to make a small box. Everything cut to length with some 45s, and now we just roll it up. And we have ourselves a nice little box to put the duck cooler in. I just glued the bottom on uh, and we'll just flush it up to the rest of the box and then uh, I'll make a sliding lid for the top. Some more project creep. I couldn't help myself so I carved uh, my brother's initials into the lid as well. A quick sand to clean everything up and the job's done. Works all right. Here we go. So there it is, completed and done, with a lanyard and a little box that it'll go into. So as I said, this is a gift for my brother's 60th birthday, so uh, happy birthday bro. Um, hope it's a good one, and um, I look forward to sitting in the duck hide with you and hearing you blast away at this and scaring all the ducks away with it. So yeah, happy with how the project turned out, um, lots of challenges, uh, the, the brass band, uh, the etching. Um, turning the barrel, getting the holes right, turning the soundboard correct, getting the soundboard correct so that it actually work. That was quite a challenge as well. Um, but it's all come together and I think it looks really good. And in its little box, um, I think it'll be a really good gift. Um, you know, even if he doesn't use it for duck shooting, he can always give it to his granddaughter and she can run around the house blowing it and drawing everyone nuts with it. So there you go, Ruby. Have some fun with it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for getting this far. Um, remember, if you if you like what you've seen, please hit the like button. Um, if you uh, like the content of my little YouTube channel, please subscribe. Um, I really appreciate your support. And once again, happy birthday, Blue Leader. Um, I look forward to opening weekend with you. Cheers.
All right, just a quick note for everyone that was hoping that this would be the gate build for the fence build that I'm currently working on. It's not, but I am working on the gate. And as you can see, it's coming along nicely. So that'll be hopefully the next project we see, but it is coming up. So stay tuned for that. All right, on to the next project.